Oh yes, everyone, it is time. It is time to let the Takanaka wash over you, yes. I know we're three minutes early, but I just had to get started right now because I'm so excited about today's episode. Good morning, everybody, and welcome, welcome to Wake and Base. I hope y'all have been having a good week. Hopefully you're having a wonderful morning or wonderful rest of the day, depending on what part of the world you're in right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn down our Takanaka here, our intro music, our track Malibu, uh, that I have been obsessed with for years, is what we're listening to today. Or at least that track, uh, we're listening to All of Me. This is the very first compilation album by Masayoshi Takanaka. 
one of our absolute elites uh, up there in the realm of kind of Greek gods of city pop. We've got Tatsuro over there. We've got Cassiopeia in T-square and then firmly seated. There is Masayoshi Takanaka doing his fun little stance with his legs, playing his guitar in a red suit. So we're going to go ahead and say goodbye to this Masayoshi Takanaka and say hello to everybody in the chat here real quick before I uh, pop over and start doing the whole show as we uh, know it and love it. Also, you can see I'm at a little bit of a different zone today. The couch is gone. It's actually just right over there. But I'm uh, moving things around to try to make it easier to make some bass videos. Uh, but without further ado, good morning, Zal. What is going on, my homie? Good to see you, my man. We got K40. What's up? Metropolitan Music Man. Get that plug dance here. Good to see you, homie. Great suggestions on the uh, Discord channel, by the way. Lots of people uh, were putting in really good suggestions, uh, discussions of a collaboration project, all these things that I'm very much into. Uh, I just got to get all my shenanigans in order, as always. But it's getting closer and closer, and I've got a new tab video coming out for y'all today. Windy Lady by Tatsuro Yamashita, Yamashita however you say it. Uh, so be looking out for that. What's up, Metal Thread, or Metal Thread? Three. Oh, what's going on? Good to see you. And then, of course, we got Layla. Who else do we have in here? We had Fight of Thunder, Malibu. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And then we got Layla and Adam. Bobby, wonderful to see all y'all. Wonderful to see all y'all. Oh, you, Eric. Oh, I missed you too, homie. I missed all of y'all. I'm so much, I can tell you, I feel so good mm, mm, being back on the show with y'all. Mm, having such a good time. Okay. Enough of the, oh, hello, Anna. How's it going? Okay, now I've said hello to everybody. Let's go ahead and go to what we're doing here today, which is this. Masayoshi Takanaka, All of Me. For those of you who have not, or who, if you have heard of Takanaka, then bear with me for a second because you know all this already. But if you do not know Takanaka, this is a cat who is so not only amazing in his instrument, but really forward thinking in his music in the way that he wrote and in the way that he released it. Uh, as a gear nerd, one of the biggest things that I just love that he did early on in his career, this is his Discogs, for those of you who haven't been on Discogs, wonderful resource for us to learn all the information we wanna learn about our artists. We can look at his uh, early releases, which were all on Kitty Records, uh, which is a subsidiary of Polydor Records, um, a Japanese record company. Uh, first album, Seychelles, we did that on uh, Waken Bass, years ago, this is like a third episode. Definitely an episode with bad audio. <laughs> and then the second album, An Insatiable High, the one right here, this is where Malibu comes from, the intro music to the show. One of my favorite city pop songs of all time, probably my favorite Takanaka song, featuring Patrice Russian on the keyboard, <laughs> so good. And then we've got the self-named album, Takanaka. <laughs> Another great album there. But this is the one that really got me going on Takanaka, where I was like, this cat is a cut above. He's doing another level. So he released this album called On Guitar. And it looks real cheesy on the front. But what he was doing was a combination of his own songs and covers. And then he put on the inserts how to recreate all these sounds and explained his signal chain. So if you look at these boxes here, it's a little hard to see, um, but what it's showing here is it's got a guitar or a bass and then it shows the lines, how it goes into an effect pedal of some kind, into something else, into something else, blah, blah, blah. So like that first one has a guitar going into a compressor, going into a distortion, going into an envelope filter, going into an echo, thing going into a biphase, I don't know what that is, going into a volume pedal, going into an amp. So it seems like a lot, but it's, if you really wanted that sound, that's how you can get it. So this guy, the music that he was making was really, really not only catchy and very advancing, it, it moved the genre forward, but it was also extremely technically dense. So there were, you know, it, as much as you wanted to scratch into his music, there's so much to dig into, and here on the channel, what we're really going to be digging into today are the musicians that played on all on this compilation album. That's what's really cool about this particular album, is it's a really cool uh, overview of all the people that he got to work with just within his first 
three or four years of operation within his first uh, three albums. So Brazilian Skies, I'm not sure if there are going to be some tracks on here from Brazilian Skies. Maybe there is. Um, but what we're looking at here is going to be this compilation. the very first of 30 compilation CDs uh, put out by Takanaka, and it's called All of Me. So the first track on this album, let's go back here and look at this, is Oh, Tango Suerte. Let's give it a listen. Oh yeah. We're back, baby. It's Takanaka time. It's Takanaka day, baby. Oh yeah. I got my Takanaka mug. Cause it says Alex 63501. But you gotta remember to flame on. I think my camera's backwards. So that was probably backwards. <laughs> So who we got? We got, of course, Masayoshi on guitar here. Who else we have? Let's see here. So all these guitar sounds are him. Layered, slide guitar. We get all those phasers, reverbs. We're just gonna look at this happy goober for a second. This happy goober. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now we're now we're grooving, baby. Mmm. That is a tango suerte. Spicy. Oh, so good. so good too because even though he's the only one playing guitar with himself it sounds like a bunch of people playing guitar together oh yeah that rhythm here's our guy on keyboards right here Just a nice little hit scratch Hiroshi Imai. Not a ton of credits here. Oh, looks like he was part of a uh, sadistic Mika band, which was Takanaka's, one of his first groups. Who else was in here that was really famous? Was it Taiko Onuki? Tsukoshi Goto? Okay, maybe not. So, amazing first track here. Uh, so, let's look and see. Ah! Tan Tan. Oh yeah, look at that. Just a little, little bit of spice in there. Just add a little bit of, little bit of lyrics. So that's something that Takanaka, at least on these early albums, he loved to do that. He'd be like, here's a sweet instrumental track for you. Just kidding, there's lyrics. And then he'll throw stuff in at the end. But very, very cool here. So talking about some of our uh, players, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn him down just a hair more. So. As I mentioned before, we have uh, the man himself, Takanaka, playing all of our guitar tracks. So, to my ear, I clocked, uh, we got a backing guitar, we got a lead guitar, we had a slide guitar, and then maybe some like funky little fills and things like that in there. But a lot of what he's doing is doubling himself. So he'll play the same line twice, record it, and it's just subtly different, and it makes it sound thicker. And then right here, he's playing in uh, thirds. So let's just review, or rewind, <laughs> review. Rewind for a second here, so we can hear the motion. He's moving in triads. I'm not sure if it's thirds or sixths, but let's listen real quick. I think that's sixths. I 
And I was going to say, what? That sound at the end there. It's like, that sounded like a marimba or something. Maybe it was a marimba. Let's see here. Yeah, Matoya Hamaguchi playing percussion. Okay, so speaking of percussion, there is a very important person on the channel here that we have not seen in literal years that we are going to get to see today. He's coming, Nobu Saito's coming. He's coming, baby. He's coming. Not on this song, but he's coming. Oh, it's going to be good. Okay. So, popping in with the chat here. Let's see what's going down here. Hey, what's going on, Han? Good to see you. Carolina, good to see you, too. All right. Uh, ready for the surprise vocal halfway in? Trina Ray already knew, what I, already knew what was going down. Exactly. That's Takanaka's MO. Loves doing that stuff. Uh, the bass in the song is top-notch. I agree. Metropolitan Music Man. Who could be slapping the, the bass so good? Oh, my goodness. It's Sagoshi Goto. The man, the myth, the legend. Yeah, look at that dude. He's just so happy. He's just cr crushing the bass. Crushing it. So this guy uh, is one of the members with Takanaka that is, I would put Tsukoshi Goto in the same position as Koki Ito for Tatsuro Yamash Yamashita, Yamashita, however you say his name. So even though it's Takanaka and Tatsuro, part of each of their sounds is their bass player. Tsugoshi Goto for Takanaka, Koki Ito for Tatsuro Yamash Yamashita, Yamashita. I don't know how to say it. Uh, point is, this is the main bass sound of Takanaka, is this cat right here. So let's go ahead and look through and see what he's done as far as credits, because he has plenty of, uh, you know, his solo albums, and I know he did like a double bass attack album <laughs> with somebody else. Uh, but yeah, here we go, Sadistic Mika Band. So that was the band that had Takanaka in it. So they started off together, and then they split off and did their own thing. And here we go, there it is, Seychelles, the first album. And then I'm sure we're going to start seeing just a ton more Takanaka as we roll down. Oh, Sun Shower, Taiko Onuki. There we go, another big connection there for Tsugoshi Goto. Look how many albums this cat is in. So many. This is all 1977 and 78. Oh, on bass, look at that. See, that's pretty cool. So uh, Takanaka did on guitar, and Tsugoshi Goto did on bass. Now, where are the inserts? I want the inserts. <laughs> Anywho, let's keep going through the chat here, checking in with everybody. And for those of y'all who are just joining us, this is what we're checking out right here. Oh, <laughs> the king's all here. <laughs> Very true. It is good to see everybody. I love seeing y'all. Oh yeah, getting some Zappa vibes on that coordination. Very much, very, very much. While it doesn't really sound like Zappa, the approach and the operation, I would say is exactly the same. It's that same level of musicianship. Wait, Master Al, oh, snap. Where's Al at? I didn't see Al. I can't believe Al's here. It's so good to see Al. I missed you. It's so good to see Al. Ah. Mom. Okay, enough of that. Let's go to our second track here. Uh, a second track is Something in Japanese. Tokyo Reggie? <laughs> what a name. What, okay, what does that mean? I don't know about y'all. I, I know what I think Tokyo Reggie means. Nothing good. <laughs> but this sounds nice. Whoa, what was that rhythm? Who's gonna tell him? <laughs> we are on Waken Base. Oh no! Oh, this is why I love Takanaka, man. Paralyzed by the funk. And it's like, what is this melody riff? And then it just funks way too hard. Not too hard, just hard enough. It's amazing. Puffin' <laughs> on that Tokyo Reggie. <laughs> That's the only thing it can mean, right? Like, 
Okay, I gotta know what the lyrics are. I gotta know what the lyrics are. I gotta know. Oh yeah, that shred solo. Okay. The melody of when summer will come again. Riding on the running wind, my heart is excited. Look, even our dreams are silent. It's getting that far. A sparkling sleep is a free melody. It passes me by in a daze. I narrow my eyes and look up at you. I can hear the song of the sea somewhere. The melody of when summer will come again. Riding on running wind, my heart's excited. Look, even our dreams are silent. It's getting that far. Yeah, he's high. <laughs> Tokyo Reggie. <laughs> oh, there you go. I mean, okay. So, not to hammer on the weed reference here, but like, if you use the word Reggie, it's not good stuff. And he seems to be having a great time on the Reggie. <laughs> I hope he's going to a dispensary now. Nobody needs to be with, hanging out with Reggie. But everyone needs to hang out with this guitar riff. Listen to those. Oh, dueling guitars back. Mm. Got that harmony guitar. Oh, Alex6501 Rewind. Who just yelled, yeah, in the background. Listen to this. Uh, Masayoshi, you're amazing, dude. You're just amazing. And, and he hits us with another harmonized guitar solo. He just can't be stopped. This is why he's so happy in this picture. It's like, ah, I don't have to do anything for this album. Everything's recorded. It sounds awesome. <laughs> I wonder where he's skydiving. I wonder if that's like uh, Japan or maybe that's... Maybe he went to Seychelles? Okay. Very, very cool song, man. All right, we're hitting that super long, just like beautiful, soulful outro. So again, I think we got Tsukoshi Goto on bass. We got Tan Tan doing our chorus and all of our vocals here. So just to jump in for a second. Uh, Tan Tan, a, a, a female singer born October 30th, 1948, died in 1998. Gonna go ahead and give it a pause over here. Pause. Thank you, Masayoshi. Uh, so she did a whole bunch, not a whole bunch of stuff, 18 credits, not a ton, enough. Uh, but she's the one singing all the backups here. And I do believe that she, yeah, she's all over these uh, first three albums. So, Tan Tan, thank you for the background vocals. Now, let's see, we haven't even talked about who is playing drums yet, and we're gonna do it right now, because it is Tatsuro Hayashi. And this is a guy that we've seen right here in Parachute. Uh, really good drummer, obviously, sounding good. That's a dope t-shirt. That's a dope t-shirt, I really like that. Um, but yeah, this guy, there we go, credits 404. All over the place, got a lot of different, oh, there it is, Hasono House, baby. We gotta do Hasono House again, man. Rockabye, my baby. It's the first track, just bang so hard. Bread and butter, there we go. So. That is who our drum, our percussion, not our percussionist, but our drummer. Uh, and then of course we got Masayoshi, chilling out on guitars, keyboards again, uh, Hiroshi Amai, the lyrics. Oh, lyrics were by Takahashi. Somebody else was hitting the Tokyo Reggie. Okay. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> that pork pie hat and that bow tie says that guy is on the Tokyo Reggie. No, okay, that's a cool, cool as hell photo, but no, he's on Tokyo Ridge. Sorry, mom. All right, percussionist is Motoya Hamaguchi. I don't know who this is. However, it's not Nobu Saito, so I don't really care. Oh, that's a good photo. That's a good looking photo, my man. That's a good looking photo. Was it? He's mistranslated as Shigeya Hamaguchi. 
might. All right. Well, that concludes my random rambling section right there. Uh, <laughs> jumping back in, let's see. Hey, what's up, vibrating Pantu? Good to see you, brother. Uh, who's going to tip off in hot Tokyo, Reggie? High on them vibes, baby. Okay, let's go to track three now, uh, Sweet Agnes. And then we'll uh, take a little fun side tour and talk about a different project that Takanaka ends up doing. I think like three years after this, two years after this, something like that. Mm. Get that outro of the Tokyo Reggie. <laughs> such a good name. It's such a good name. All right, who's different on this one? All right, well, as always, I just have to let you guys know that I'm going to get myself copyright straight. If you've ever played Metal Gear Solid, where's that sound? That Well, I just got copyright struck for nothing. <laughs> This sound! That guitar scrape. That's like exactly the sound they use in Metal Gear Solid. The longest pick scrape of all time. He's still going. Damn it, I love Takanaka. He's so awesome. That guy definitely stole Takanaka's glasses. What is happening? This is too good. There's, this shouldn't work. There are too many things happening for this to work, but it works so well. There's so much going on. Swirling around. Oh man. Who's playing keyboards here? What? I was about to say, I was like, this sounds like some, you know, YMO kind of stuff. Well, no wonder Jun Fukumachi's on here. Dude. This guy, so funky. So funky. Yeah, where's albums? Oh, so good. All right, I'm digging this song. We're gonna turn it down for a second here. Got some good info from the chat here. Uh, Suichi Murakami also played with Toshiki Kadamatsu on some of his albums. So again, you know, the seven degrees of separation from all these artists is too much. You need like three. <laughs> you can usually find one, probably more like two people on most big, well-known city pop albums and connect it to somebody else very, very quickly because most of them are studio musicians. And even somebody like Tsugoshi Goto, who plays with Takanaka all the time, also is the sound of Taiko Onuki bass. So all these things are very, very, very connected. And there's just so much going on here. So earlier I was saying, I was like, man, there's so much happening in this song. Like, again, Takanaka's layering all these guitars. Key modulation right there. It's so much stuff. We've got all this guitar lead. We've got a funky, funky bass. I mean, drums are chilling, but then you've got these lyrics coming in and you've got all this you know, synth, like YMO style uh, lead, but it 
all comes together and weaves in and out. It works very, very well. And again, we just this is the first song that hits us with any kind of traditional Asian folk song melody because we've got that pentatonic uh, in use there. <laughs> and he's just using so many tropey things, but they work. They all work. No way. Was this cat? Was Suichi Morikami also in Cassiopeia for a minute? No way. No. No way. Oh, he was in Nobu Kane. <laughs> Nobu Saito, baby. Um, well, let's see. Suichi Morikami. I don't know what I just did. Pause. Search. And then Cassiopeia. Control find. Uh. Okay. Members. Since both Prism and Cassiopeia arrived to the Japanese fusion scene during the boom of the 70s, both bands became friends. Uh, Akira Wada, Noro, and Omura appeared in Shuichi Murakami's album Tokyo Fusion Night in 1978. As a result, he would also appear in many of the band's live performances from the time of their live debut until mid 1980s. He returned one more time as a special guest during the tour with Cassiopeia and Tetro uh, Sakurai in 1997 and in 2015. Both Cassiopeia the Third and Prism collaborated in a crossover special. Very cool. I had no idea Prism was still rolling around. So Cassiopeia, um, or why it says Cassiopeia the Third, is they have gone through uh, several different uh, iterations. So like the core members would be S.A. Noro, who wrote, he's the guitarist, like wrote everything. Uh, and then Minoru Muk uh, Mukaya, he is uh, what I call the magical chef. This guy playing the keyboards. When I did my little welcome back video, that was who I dressed up as, was that guy. I love him. Kira Jimbo, baby. Drummer from the stars. So good. And then Takashi, I don't know who that, there it is. I was like, where's Tetsuro Sakurai? I always thought it was Tetsuro. It's Tetsuo Sakurai. I'm just dumb. I've listened to so much of his music and just had no idea. Oh, <laughs> they put a picture of side by side. Anyway, I bet they have the, uh, yeah, here we go. Here's the picture. So this shows the timeline of when everybody was in it. And uh, I guess they just straight up stopped in 2006. Dang. So anyway, Cassiopeia won. I want to say that when Sakurai left, that was when they made... Um, Cassiopeia the two, Cassiopeia the second, and now it's Cassiopeia the third, and they got some, yeah, this lady's keyboards, that cat plays bass. Um, anyway, yeah, good little sidetrack to uh, Cassiopeia because, again, all these people are connected, and it's good to always keep up and see what's going down. Okay, so next track we have here, let's see what we got. <laughs> A paste. Uh, Ako Gen Ako Greno Seishel Shotu. Okay, well, let's type in lyrics and see if there's lyrics for it, because I bet there are. And hit that volume. Hit that volume, baby. Thank you, Flight of Thunder, for all this info. That was a fun side note. I like that. It's an instrumental. Okay. Ooh. I'm going to assume this is from the album Seychelles. Oh, baby, is it time for some Nobu? It says no. I don't believe him. I think he's in there somewhere. Mm. All right, so do we have anybody new here? Oh, this is so this is the exact same lineup that we had from uh, our previous one of our previous songs from Seychelles, which I believe is Tokyo Reggie. Was Tokyo Reggie on here? 
Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Tokyo Reggie is from uh, Seychelles. Funky Machan. Got Tropic Birds on here too. Oh, we get some Jake Concepcion. It's coming up. Woo! And that's where Takanaka comes and gets you. You think you understand where the song is going, what's happening? Throws this curveball at you. As cool and groovy and chill as this song is, we're gonna turn that one down a little bit so I can get some uh, yammering in, as I like to do, and talk about some things. One of the things that has happened since I first talked about Takanaka on the channel years ago, and today, is that I have gone to some more live shows and I had an opportunity with one of my best friends to go see a band called Primus. For those of y'all who are unfamiliar with Primus, they suck which is uh, not true, they actually rock super, super hard, but if you're a Primus fan, that's their chant is Primus sucks. I don't know. Anyway, Les Claypool, the bass player right here, is a monster. He's a monster bass player. He's just amazing, look at that. Homeboy's got a whammy bar on his bass. I, I wish I was that cool. Also, Tan Tan. Killing it in the background there. So. Why am I talking about Primus? Because Masayoshi Takanaka, one of his albums is called The Rainbow Goblins, which was based on this story written by Old De Rico, The Rainbow Goblins. It's a children's book about, uh, I don't know, little goblins trying to have a good day making rainbows. It's very trippy. Like, it's a very trippy album. Ripe for prog rock, I might add, interpretation. So Takanaka does this, and he comes up with a really awesome uh, programmatic story for this album. Makes these outfits, you know, all these goblins, really great album, like, I, amazing album. And really, while it was, it's not super well known, I guess it's not well known, it should be well known. Everybody should know Rainbow Goblins, it's awesome. Primus, about eight, nine years ago, 40 years after Takanaka, uh, made something called The Desaturating Seven. And if you look here, looks pretty similar to the Rainbow Goblins because it is in fact based on the Rainbow Goblins. So Primus, when I went to go see them, I was like, Oh, we got a Q&A, I get to go talk to him. I'm gonna ask him a question. I'm gonna say, hey, what, like, how did you guys come up with the Desaturating Seven? Were you influenced by Masayoshi Takanaka and the Rainbow Goblins released back in Japan in the late 70s, early 80s? And I was so excited to ask that question because I was like, there's just no way that this isn't connected. And then Les Claypool is gonna see me ask the question and go, that's the greatest question I've ever heard will you join Primus? And I would say yes. Yes, I will join Primus. So, I asked that question. And he looked at me, he stared me right in the eyes and said, nah man, never heard of it. But I swear to you, when he looked at me in the eyes, what he was saying to me is, don't blow up my spot, kid. You trying to bust me on this? What are you doing, shut up? I felt that energy, like, cause it was like, I wasn't trying to call him out for Jack and Takanaka Steez, but I was like, have you listened to his music? Do you think it's cool? And he's just like, nah, man, never heard of him. Looked at the bass player and, and drummer, they're just like, what? Cause it was very clear. They had no idea what was going on with this album. It was all Les Claypool's idea. Anyway, there's my little story uh, with Rainbow Goblins, Les Claypool and trying to get to the bottom of a connection that I was positive was there, but uh, I have been now confirmed by the artist was not there. So, 
Very strange, but at the same time, I guess that just means Rainbow Goblins is such a good children's book that two different prog artists decided to make albums of it independently 40 years apart. Pretty cool. Kind of like a Faust story. That'll happen. Yeah, there's my, my boy. Goblin, 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 goblin. Have I seen the Takanaka surfboard guitar? Oh, I don't know. Only about every day of my life. I think about that thing. It's Takanaka surfboard guitar. He looks so stupidly happy when he plays this thing. Like, look at this. He's like, yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody spent a lot of time building this for me. And I... I really enjoy it. <laughs> like it. <laughs> That's so crazy. Oh, I've never seen this one. I like that. He's riding the surfboard. No, nah, man. I mean, talking knock, it's like... So we're talking about uh, City Pop here. I was talking to one of my friends about like all the tropes, all the check boxes that you have to tick, where it's like, need to talk about a love that's lost. Click. Need to talk about one night stands that I wish lasted forever. Click. Beach. Click. Girls at the beach. Click. Lost love while on a boat looking at the beach. Check. If we go back and look at these lyrics uh, for one of these songs, where was it? Not Lucky Me. Maybe it was the one right before. Yeah, Tokyo Reggie. <laughs> looking at this, this is like, this is our city pop formula right here. The melody of when summer will come again. Riding on the one, running when my heart is excited. Dreams are silent. It's, uh, see, I hear the song of the sea somewhere. Melody when the summer will come again. You know, it's like all this kind of, all that kind of stuff is just so city pop. So in the vein of this stuff. And But at the same time, Takanaka makes it fresh. It's very, very good. Okay, so I believe that is it for our Seychelles portion of the album. Uh, and I think we're now on our B-side. I do believe we are getting ready to hear I Remember You. So let's go ahead and check in on that. We're only 20 minutes into this album. Oh my goodness. I'm never going to make it all the way through. Maybe we'll have to do a two-parter. Ooh, Primus is new to you? If you really like this, you might not like Primus. <laughs> but I... Primus, I love them. They're awesome. They're really very unique, is what I'll say. We'll have to think about that thing every day. What's up, Dapper? Good to see you, brother. Welcome, welcome. Just grooving. All right, who's doing the strings for all this now? Koji Satsuma? Where are you at, buddy? Now, these have to be real strings. This can't be a sample. More research is required. God, Insatiable High is such a good album. Oh, it's such a good album. Okay, here we go. I remember you. Who's playing strings? That's strings! What is happening? Harp player is credited? I just heard the harp. Where's the strings? Okay. Uh, well, I'm glad that I got credited for vocals. <laughs> Who the hell is Alex442? Me. Okay, this this has to be the Polydor Studio Symphony Orchestra. Ooh, I 
I like that sax. That just came out of nowhere. Yeah, dude, this is like hacking me off now. Like, no one's gonna give credit to the string players? This is really gonna drive me nuts. Yeah, they're really not gonna do it. Wow. My, my heart. You see, secretly, yeah, they're, they're totally different. Okay. So we're, we're vibing, we're chilling. Now for me personally, knowing my Takanaka, this is just like, okay, homie. This is chill, this is very chill. Let's roll on to something else. Let's get something else going here. <laughs> I'm just impatient. And this album is super long. And his songs are usually super long. Oh my goodness, Tropic Birds is nine minutes. We're not listening to all of that. <laughs> How did he get this on two? Look at, is this like, oh, it's a four-sided album. I was like, we just finished A1. How on earth are we gonna put everything on B1? <laughs> Got it. Okay. All right, well, very cool. Very cool, we're taking a pause on Takanaka there. Taking a pause. Okay, so uh, again, just referencing those, uh, had somebody mentioned here that they had never heard of Primus. Uh, Primus, enjoy, is what I'm gonna say. Definitely check out some of their uh, earlier albums. I think that's the some of the bread and butter, or like some of the good, good stuff, that good nosh. With our desaturated seven being much later. Oh, here's another interesting thing. Oh, and here's the last thing. Masayoshi Takanaka. Here is his Rainbow Goblins, his interpretation. Again, it's like, I don't see how on earth anybody could look up this book and not immediately be confronted with this. Like, so when Les Claypool says to me, hey, I have no idea who this Takanaka guy is, Shut up, kid. I'm thinking, homie, you totally saw this. <laughs> you just didn't want to say anything. Uh, anyway, 1981, Fusion Psychedelic Rock, The Seven Goblins, this track right here. It's like one of the greatest pieces of music, pieces of art ever created. Just go check it out. It's so good. So, 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 so good. Uh, but what I wanted to point out was talking about, not this album, Saturated 7, Masayoshi Takanaka. Uh, as always, I have to just point out, if we're on the English Wikipedia, that's what you get. Not very much. If you go to the Japanese Wikipedia, you have more than you could ever possibly read. <laughs> Which is good, because that's what I want. And I was looking through here, and I found an interesting connection to a discussion that we had a couple weeks ago Talk, or several weeks ago, talking about uh, Cassiopeia and how they all used Yamaha gear. And Takanaka is known for using uh, a Yamaha SG. So if we look at his uh, main picture right here, this is the guitar that he got started on. It's Fender Stratocaster. Uh, you know, he did first several, two, three albums with that. And that's what's on the cover of um, Takanaka, is him playing one of his Fenders. At one point, or at a certain point in time, he switches and starts playing this, which is an SG style, but it's a Yamaha, a Yamaha SG knockoff. So I was reading here, uh, getting ready this morning, and I saw an interesting thing that talked about how he got his Yamaha SG model. So when he was starting off, I'll just read this to you, he played with a Gibson Les Paul Jr. and then a Strat, a Stratocaster, and during his time with the Sadistic Mika Band, he borrowed the, a guitar from a wealthy collector, Kazuhiko Kato, and that was the Yamaha SG. And then he started using an Ama, Yamaha SG-1000 around that time. And the reason was, he was approached from by Yamaha and got it as a free gift. He's since become his main guitar player along with the Strat, but in fact, Takanaka himself has never signed an endorsement with Yamaha. So this is the kind of stuff that I was talking about where you look in the late 70s and early 80s, especially the early 80s, and all these real popular bands, everybody's playing Yamaha gear. Everybody's playing Yamaha gear. 
And it's not just because they had endorsements. Yamaha was literally going around to anybody who had any kind of salt and just being like, here you go, buddy, here you go. Hope you like it, hope you like it. <laughs> They're just shoving their instruments at people to get them to play it. And it was interesting too, especially because, you know, talk and knock, if you sign a contract with a company, you have to play their gear. Like you don't get an option. You can't sign with Yamaha and then go play a Fender on stage. Takanaka was known for the Fender sound, so it's like I'm not going to sign a contract with you to limit myself in my tone for how versi for how important it is for him. But if you give me some free stuff, I might use it. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So that's how he got his uh, SG, which is very similar to the Asei Noro SG. Not the same, but they look very similar. Okay, let's go ahead and fast forward now and find that next track. Okay, we're gonna be uh, really slowing it down here. I think we got another instrumental track here. My keyboard doesn't work. There we go. Bom, bom, bom. Izu Amanatsu Naturo Uri. No idea. Oh, Citrone Vendor. Maybe that's what that means. Damn, this is tasty. Now this is balance. And you got a little bit of reverb on those drums. That's a tasty addition. It's just really, really round. Yeah, listen. Oh, that's such a good keyboard sound. Who is this? Kiyosumi Ishikawa. This is hard to do. Like, to play something in this kind of groove is very difficult because it's so easy to push forward and the groove is in the silence and in the release. And then that bass enters so round and smooth. So good. Yeah. If you've ever seen South Park, you've heard Primus. Primus wrote their intro song. Yeah. Yeah. Cassiopeia might have mint jams, but Takanaka has it's a drone vendor. Hell yeah, man. I debt like. Hmm. I don't know if I would like to see Cass. Oh, oh man. Oh, now they're in the. A shaker. What's that called? Uh, the hand. Uh, I can see it in my head. This. So this uh, instrument, Afushe Kabasa. Yeah, what you do is you can see that that's a kind of corrugated ribbed metal. And then these are just beads. And when you rub them against it, it makes that sound. And usually people will go. <laughs> Same thing with this guy right here, whose name I can never pronounce properly. Giero? Geros? Hero? Anyway, but this guy, it has a stick. And you go. And it makes a cool sound. So here's our. Oh no, now we got shakers. Just a little bit. Just a little in your left ear. Nice. Ooh, that keyboard solo was funky. Dude, this guy is just... Look at, look at this. This dude just got snagged by Takanaka. And is like, you're not going anywhere. Oh, is this that... Is this the girl? Okay, I think I know who this is. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, 
So this is this video is Takanaka live in Tokyo something. This I love this song soon. It's so cool. But this okay. I'm wondering if this is who this is. Is if she is this uh, Kiyosumi Ishikawa. What is this group? Do you think that's her? That might be her. I think that's her, man. Dude, she's awesome at keyboards. That's crazy, though. So he just, like, snagged her. Yeah. He's like, you're in my group now. Oh, man, this song is so good. Again, it's all about that control. So this... What track is this? Uh... I bet this is, this might be off of Insatiable High. Mm -mm. Maybe it's off of Takanaka. No? Is it off of Brazilian Sky? I guess so. Yeah. So this is also a really good example of how versatile um, Takanaka is. Because each one of his albums took a very different tilt feel. Um, and so we're coming up on what I think is like the best stuff. So Seychelles is what we were listening to mostly so far, which is a very cool album and has all this cool technical stuff and is for 1976 amazingly forward thinking in terms of what's about to happen in the 70s and or in the 80s uh man such a cool song there uh an insatiable high is much more jazz much more funky um not funky but like i don't know just jazzy and smooth it was one that was done with mostly american artists so if we just check click on this for a second here we can see uh we got where's our bass boy our homie let me see if I can find a better version. Because we've got Patrice Russian. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, Abraham Laboriel. Uh, we got Lee Rittner. Harvey Mason is on here. Chuck Rainey is on here. There's Patrice Russian. That's my girl who we're talking about. Uh, who We had another big bass player on here. Like, uh, what was his name? Uh, crap. <laughs> I saw it over here. Nathan East. By the way, Nathan East is a... Uh, uh, he's a Yamaha-sponsored bass player still. Did not know that. He was the guy who uh, was one of the first people to play the five-string, like, very early on. The Yamaha five-string bass. Um, anywho, so that was this album, that second album he did. And now, and then the third album was even more on just kind of this, like, ridiculous, goofy funk vibe feel. It's just very, very goofy. Still really, really cool. And then Brazilian Skies, which is what we've been listening, what we just listened to there, a little track off of that, was, I mean, just like the best chill, slow version, whatever you want to call it, of that song. Like, super cool. Very, very cool riff. It just sounds awesome. And I think that's who this is right here. So this is, uh, again, just to go over her name here, because I had not put that together who she was. Kiyosumi Ishikawa uh, is the keyboardist who started playing just with Takanaka, and then Takanaka's like, you're playing with me now. You're going on tour. Okay, very cool. So checking in on our next track here. Let's see what we got. This is gonna be our Tropic Birds. All right, we'll just listen to a little bit of this because this song is super long. It's very cool. Oh, it's kind of an AI image there. People like their bow ties today. I was about to be like, is this at full volume or am I losing my mind? I've got too many tabs. Now you see, I'm still not seeing Nobu Saito, and it's just frustrating me. Do, 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 
There is some Jake Concepcion. Goated. <laughs> Very true. Mm. Yeah, it does this for a long time. It's dope though, don't get me wrong. It we gotta get into the, the pop in. And this is why I don't believe Primus didn't listen to this. It's like, dude, Takanaka is doing what you guys wanna be doing. You just bust in like a little rush here. Yeah, eat your heart out, King Crimson. Yes. To the valleys of the Takanaka. <laughs> and then Santana comes in. Got a little bit of everything here, baby. Just Tsugoshi Goto, man. Can't be stopped. So what's happening right here from a musical point of view is that like anytime you have this kind of feel where it just feels like it's driving forever and you're just like, man, why is this just like floating on and on? What's happening is the uh, bass is just playing one note, an A, it's droning. Just holding that and he's doing the fifth and the octave sometimes he'll add the fourth all that I like how I goofed up right there at the end anyway that's what that sound is, and it's uh, very, very commonly used. Nobu Saito! Not yet, not yet. I just want it to be Nobu Saito. Jake Concepcion, the man, the myth, the legend. Okay, again. Could listen to this forever, but we're already at our hour marker. We gotta keep rolling. This song's awesome. It just goes though. And then we end it with a nice little Tatsuro Yamashita. He's like, oh, you think you got something cool with Ride On Time in 1980? I'm gonna do it first. <laughs> right? It's like, that sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. I think it's clear that uh, Tatsuro Yamashita, I think he saw Takanaka do and he's like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> that conception is good. Yeah, <laughs> the album is 69 minutes. It is very nice. It's a good, it's a good album. All right, so now we got Brazilian Skies. So now we got some new cats. Got a new chorus. Uh, Shigeru Inoue on drums. Who? I don't know this guy. Apparently did a lot. Well, played on Rainbow Goblins, is all that matters for me. So this sounds a lot like, uh, oh, what was that other one that he has? Mambo number five. <laughs> okay, Brazilian Skies. Very cool, very chill. This album is so long.
We're skipping. We're going to Mambo number five. Because that's what, that's what we need right now. Yeah. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay, getting close. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Ooh, Hiroshi Sato plays clavinet on this? Hell yeah. Dude, this guy. Awakening. So much going on in this song. There it is. Yeah. You got a mambo. Bingo bug. <laughs> All right, what are the lyrics? Okay, that was awesome. Sha Sha Fright? It's a tango. Let's dance. Disco Dango. Hot Shot. Jingle Jango. Cha Mambo Match. Go Fright Strike Leisure Dazo. Tick Tick Tack Bingo Bango. No notes. Perfect song. God. He's just ripping the ending. Oh. So good, man. God. He's still shredding this outro to this day. <laughs> All right. Once this wraps up, we're gonna go to ESP, our next track here. Ooh. It's still going. All right, we're going to ESP. It goes so long. All right, this is a song I don't know very well. Is this off of Insatiable High? Yeah, okay. Maybe I do know it then. Yeah, I do know the song. Oh, here's our boy, Abraham Laborio. Harvey Mason, oh, hell yeah, that's the sound. Masayoshi with Lee Rittner on guitar. Yeah. And the horns are the Tower of Power horn section. Hell yeah, dude. Patrice rushing on keys, yeah. I can tell you what you think you ought to be to use the telephone. Anytime I'm feeling all I know. Close your eyes and call me anywhere. Baby girl, you know I'll soon be there. We got the VSP. That's an awesome hook. Man, listen to those dueling guitars. So this is definitely Takanaka. Oh yeah. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Man, these horns are killing me. They're so awesome. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I like glitched out there for a second just like reading YouTube. Uh, YouTube was chirping at me saying, you're playing copyrighted content. Did you know you're doing that? It's like, yes. But I'm trying to educate people about it. I've tried to talk about it. So if I uh, get randomly kicked off the stream here at any second, know that uh, I still love you all. And I still am doing stuff. I just got kicked off. Okay, well, let's go ahead and pause here just to give uh, this YouTube warning a, a pause because it's freaking out on me so much. Uh, yeah, amazing. So this goes back to talk about uh, the difference between these three albums because this is, again, a compilation album, first compilation of several, that uh, cover these first four albums on Kitty Records. So Seychelles, 1976, Insatiable High and Takanaka, both albums in 1977, and then Brazilian Sky in 1978. And all these albums have slightly different lineups, especially Insatiable High has a way different lineup because it was done in America, or recorded in L.A. with the uh, L.A. studio musicians and artists and things like that. Um, and each one has a very, very different feel and a different approach, but at the same time it has that unifying thread of Takanaka sound and how he arranges his music and how he writes it with a lot of these harmony, dual, dueling style guitars. Um, just the flow of the song is very, very unique. It's not your standard intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, breakdown, solo, chorus. No. It's always like intro, pre-verse, pre-verse to chorus, then the verse, new section, intro again, new section. He does weird stuff like that, but... Very, very interesting, and like I mentioned earlier, a lot of things that will happen here don't make sense on paper, where it's like, you've got way too many instruments here, you got way too much going on, but it all flows together, and it makes sense, and it sounds good. So, that was that. Now, this is one I'm particularly excited about, because I don't think I have heard this in a long time. Star Wars Samba. I'm not even sure if I've ever heard Star Wars Samba. So, we're about to hear it and probably immediately get copyright knocked. Okay, this is from Brazilian Skies, that's why I've never heard it. So why is it called Star Wars Samba? Okay. I'm dead. I'm literally dead. This is like getting Rick rolled for the first time. What is happening? I can't do it. Ewoks, I can't do it. I can't do it. It's too, I can't do it. That's too ridiculous. That's too ridiculous. That's too ridiculous, buddy. That's too ridiculous. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Still it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah get out of here. And let's get on to the whole reason why I did this. Hold on, where's Sexy Dance? You jerks. Well, we know what this song is. I have no idea if, if this is all synced up, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> I forgot how to play it. Yeah, 
Yep, I forgot how to play it. <laughs> oh yeah, nothing like embarrassing yourself on a Thursday morning. Feels good. So this song is one of my favorite songs of all time, Malibu. It's just so chill. It's exactly like what I was talking about earlier with E, or not ESP, uh, with, what was it, Tropic Birds? Or no, the Citron Vendor, whatever that was. Yeah, Citron Vendor. Like, it's just so controlled, very balanced, and that keyboard, man, it's just like, it just butters my, it butters my bread. I don't know how else to say it. Bum, 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 and it's having a conversation like, did you know that this is sweet? Yes. See, that's what I'm talking about. Just too good. But, but as good as it is, everyone's heard this song 80,000 times. So, again, we're gonna have to say goodbye. <laughs> to Mr. Takadaka and move on to our next song because we're over time and I definitely want to make it to Ready to Fly because that song is sick. Here we go. And I also want to see if they put Sexy Dance on here because Sexy Dance is an awesome song and we're going to have to go suss that out if that's not on here because I don't want to listen to Star Wars Samba again. <laughs> Oh, they're saying track 12 got blocked. Sexy dance. Dude, listen to this insanity. And guess what? It's time, finally. It's finally time. So stupid, but so genius at the same time. What is this ridiculousness? Listen to this boy. Listen to that Nobu Saito. You hear that Nobu Saito in your right ear? Dude, eat your heart out, Mario Kart. Oh yeah. See, I'm, I'm just gonna show you how easy this is to do. It fits. Okay, maybe not this level. Where's a, let's get a beach level. There we go. And Nobu Saito just going ham. It's just so good. It's just so good. So good. Ah. We got that Moog synthesizer. Ah. So good, man. I'm bummed that we can't go back and listen to Sexy Dance here just because it's, <laughs> if I didn't already get this stream blocked, it's definitely gonna get blocked now. And we're way over on time. But man. What a great compilation album, a great artist, Masayoshi Takanaka. For those of y'all who had never seen, had never heard of him before, hopefully this was a fun introduction to who he is and what he sounds like and the kind of stuff that he is all about. So, if you're interested, go check out some of his earlier albums, go check out some of his later albums. All of this stuff is really, really cool, really, really great. And man, hearing Nobu Saito again just warms my heart, makes me feel good. All right, well, thank you all so much for hanging out. Just gonna check in back here with the chat. 74 minutes total. Yeah, it's a long album. Trinary was hitting us in there. The 2020 flashbacks. Yeah, thank you all so much for hanging out with me. I really, really appreciate it. It's so much fun to do all this for y'all. Uh, I'm working on tabs, getting new stuff put out. Uh, one piece of unfortunate news. I did get my first copyright strike in a hot minute uh, this, this morning, actually 
for Maria Takeuchi backing track that I made. So I was tell telling you guys that one of my new projects is to try to make teaching aids and tools for everybody, one of which is backing tracks. So no bass, just the instrumental, uh, well, everything but the bass. And it's got the music so you can play along. And that got ripped down and gave me a strike. So I'm gonna have to go do some research into what exactly happened there, but it's a great way to segue into my Patreon, which has all the same things and doesn't have copyright strikes. So if you are wanting to learn how to play any of these songs and you're interested in the tab portion or the learning how to play bass portion of my channel, go check it out because I'm adding new stuff every single week and I'm just going to be adding more and more and more and that's going to be one of my primary focuses for the next couple months is really making a good Patreon for people to go check out and have good access to things. Man, Takanaka's just going crazy in the background in my ears here. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So Metropolitan Music Man says he got a strike as well and they refused to lift it. So there you go. Uh, it happens on YouTube. But again, if you go to Patreon, you go check it out. You can get access to all the same things. No copyright strikes there. And as always, if you really, really want this information, these videos, and you do not have $10, do not fret. Just send me a message on Discord. You can join the Discord channel. It's completely free. Great resources there, lots of tabs. Tons of wonderful people who are super knowledgeable, more knowledgeable than me, and they'll help you out and all of that. But if you really want some stuff and you're low on cash, just hit me up, message me. I'll send it to you. Don't worry about it. But if you're just taking money and you're throwing it in the trash can because you're like, I just have too much money. Throw me 10 bucks. I'll appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Uh, keep the requests coming. Keep all the all the good community stuff going. I love you guys so much. I'm going to keep, I'm going to go back to work. I'm going to try to get Windy Lady here put out in the next couple hours. So uh, be on the lookout for that. And yeah. <laughs> And right before I get out here, I'm going to mention the Jackie Chan stunt army, and let's see how long it takes me before I get bopped off the internet.